Mr. Noisy was a very, very noisy person indeed. For example, if Mr. Noisy was reading this story to you, he'd be shouting at the top of his voice. And the top of Mr. Noisy's voice is a very loud place indeed. You can hear it a hundred miles away. For example, when most people sneeze, you can hear them in the next room. But, ha, 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 achoo! When Mr. Noisy sneezes, you can hear him in the next country. Now, this story starts when Mr. Noisy was asleep in bed. In his bedroom, in his house, which is on top of a hill. He was snoring. And as you can well imagine, when Mr. Noisy snores, that is a snore worth hearing. It sounds more like a herd of elephants than a snore. Then Mr. Noisy's alarm clock went off. Mr. Noise's alarm clock sounds like no other alarm clock in the world. Sounds more like a fire engine. Mr. Noisy woke up. And so too did all the people who lived in Wobbletown, which is at the bottom of Mr. Noisy's hill. Later that day, Mr. Noisy decided that he had to go shopping. He went out of his house, shutting the door behind him. The door wobbled. The house wobbled. The whole hill wobbled. Wobble town wobbled. Even a bird flying high wobbled. Then Mr. Noisy walked down the hill. He walked into the baker's shop. I like a loaf of bread, boomed Mr. Noisy to Mrs. Crumb, the baker's wife. Mrs. Crumb trembled and sold him a loaf. Then Mr. Noisy walked along the street to the butcher. He walked into the butcher's shop. I'd like a piece of meat, boomed Mr. Noisy to Mr. Bacon, the butcher. Mr. Bacon trembled and sold him some meat. Afterwards, Mrs. Crumb met Mr. Bacon in the street. We really must do something about Mr. Noisy being so noisy, she said. Definitely, cried Mr. Bacon. But what? I know, said Mrs. Crumb. She whispered into Mr. Bacon's ear. Mr. Bacon smiled a small smile, which grew into a broad grin. Mrs. Crumb, he said, I think you've got the answer. The following day, Mr. Noisy again went shopping down to Wobbletown. He went into Mrs. Crumb's shop. I'd like a loaf of bread, she boomed. I'm sorry. Uh... What did he say? Asked Mrs. Crump, pretending not to hear. I'd like a loaf of bread! Mr. Noisy shouted. Oh, I'm sorry, said Mrs. Crump, putting her hand to her ear. Uh, could you speak up a bit, please? I'd like a loaf of bread! Roared Mr. Noisy. I can't hear you, replied Mrs. Crump. Mr. Noisy gave up and went out. Mr. Noisy went into Mr. Bacon's shop. I like a piece of meat. Boom. Mr. Bacon pretended not to notice. I like a piece of meat. Mr. Noisy shouted. Did he say something? Asked Mr. Bacon. I said I like a piece of meat. Roared Mr. Noisy. I beg your pardon, said Mr. Bacon. Mr. Noisy gave up and went out and went home and went to bed. Hungry. The day after, Mr. Noisy tried again. He went into Mrs. Crumb's shop. I'd like a loaf of bread. Boom. A what? asked Mrs. Crumb. Mr. Noisy started shouting at the very top of his voice. A loaf of... And then he stopped. Then he thought, and then he said quietly, I'd like a loaf of bread, please, Mrs. Crumb. Mrs. Crumb smiled. Certainly, she said. Then Mr. Noisy went into Mr. Bacon's shop. I like a piece of meat. He boomed. Did you say something? Asked Mr. Bacon. Yes, I did, shouted Mr. Noisy at the very, very top of his voice. 
and he stopped. And then he thought. And then he said quietly, I'd like a piece of meat, please, Mr. Bacon. Mr. Bacon smiled. My pleasure, he said. So, carrying his bread and meat, Mr. Noisy set off home up the hill. And then he stopped. Then he thought. And then do you know what he did? He tiptoed. A tiptoe was something that Mr. Noisy had never tried before. It was fun. And you know something. From then until now, Mr. Noisy isn't anything like as noisy as he used to be. And you know something else? The people of Wobbletown are delighted. Especially Mrs. Crumb and Mr. Bacon. And you know something else? Mr. Noisy has learned how to whisper. Thank you.